everyone, welcome to Art of the Unquiet Grave. If you're new here, I'm Ash, and I am so excited <laughs> for this video today. Um, if you happen to catch the video that I released just previous to this one, um, we took a five foot tall life-size skeleton, uh, just a cheap plastic one that I got from Walmart, and we antiqued and aged it. Now it was kind of a mystery as to what we were going to be doing with our skeleton, so today is the day where you find out what we're making with him or how we're going to display it. So if anyone had any guesses, now's the time you find out if you were right or not. <laughs> so I know you're probably asking yourself, how do you improve upon a skeleton? There's only really one way that I can answer that is that you bejewel him, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> so what we're doing with that skeleton is we're going to be turning him into a gilded saint um, or a gilded skeleton inspired by the gilded saints of Rome. Um, if you're not familiar with what they are, I'll insert some pictures here of the real Gilded Saints. But basically, they were these fantastically decorated and bejeweled skeletons that they pulled from the Roman catacombs. Incredible. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Um, but being realistic, I'm probably never going to get to Rome, or not for a very long time, so I thought I would bring the Gilded Saints to me. <laughs> so I'm going to take you on the journey here of how we built a sarcophagus for our skeleton um, and how we bejeweled him and how we're going to display it. So I'll go ahead and jump into that process now and at the end I will do a little quick wrap up with our special guest of honor, the skeleton himself. <laughs> so I'll see you then. So if you know me, you know I love putting skeletons in cabinets. <laughs> so uh, here's another cabinet that I got from Goodwill for $9 because uh, nobody wanted to buy it since it didn't have the interior shelves. Um, but I just saw that as an opportunity to make a sarcophagus for our Gilded Saint. So here I've already cleaned it with some Dawn dish soap, let it dry, and now we're just going over it with three light coats of an antique gold spray paint. Um, you just want to make sure that you're not spraying too closely or too heavily so you avoid drips that way. Now if you notice that black and white paper there, that's just some contact paper that I put over the glass that I didn't want painted. It was just a quicker way to sort of tape everything off rather than using paper and painter's tape. So that's a tip for you. If you get some contact paper from the Dollar Tree, it'll do uh, just fine. So then I went ahead and painted these gold furniture appliques that I got off of Ally Express. Um, they're just wooden furniture appliques. And since I've already stood the cabinet up here, and for the fact that it is large, six feet tall, I didn't want to keep moving it from standing to lying down. So here I'm just applying the um, furniture appliques while it's upright, and I'm just using some blue painter's tape to hold that in place while that wood glue dries. So all told, I ended up putting four furniture appliques on. Um, the three around here on the sides, they were all exactly the same. And then there's a larger one that's going to go up top that I'll show you in a second. So I actually ended up running out of gold spray paint for the top one there. So I addressed that later and just hand painted it. Now this was a rhinestone set that I got off of Amazon, I think for eight or nine dollars it had thousands of rhinestones in it that were all um like diamond clear tone and uh, like a red burgundy and here's my very favorite glue to use for anything it's that uh tacky glue and we're just going to take those rhinestones and i'm going to paint that tacky glue on like basically in all the crevices of those furniture appliques and we're going to bedazzle it <laughs> so this was sort of I'd, I'd like to tell you that i had more of a concrete idea of exactly what i was going to do but basically I just started trying to like find any nook and cranny where I could nestle in a rhinestone and just sort of went to town. <laughs> now that little pencil that I'm using, that came with the rhinestone kit, which I'll link in the description if I can find the same one. And that's just basically a little like wax pencil or crayon that you can use to help pick up the rhinestones. It was very handy. I don't know that I would have been able to do this without it. So on either side of the applique there, you can see that there's sort of like a floral design. So I'm just nestling in uh, some, some diamonds and some rubies, you know, obviously diamond tone and ruby tone rhinestones. And um, I'm just going to keep repeating that over the whole process.
did call out Tommy there inside the cabinet, my one of my beautiful kittens. <laughs> he was very helpful through the whole process, as he is every project, as you can imagine. So here we're just adding some more rhinestones to the rest of the applique using that same glue and that same rhinestone set. Um, there were varying different sizes that came in that, so it just kind of was a little bit of a, a guessing game and trial and error to figure out how many I could cram into each little <laughs> nook and cranny. And now we're going to start on that top um, furniture applique or medallion, whatever you'd like to call it, in the center there. So this was actually a separate set that I got of um, just kind of like faux pearls and rhinestones from Amazon, which again, I'll link if I can still find it. Um, and I'm just sort of putting like the faux pearls around that center medallion there. And now I'm adding some fake diamonds too, because you know, in this project, the beauty of it is you really can't be ostentatious enough. <laughs> like I could have gone to town on this for probably months and just uh, painted every single section and covered it in rhinestones. But you know, at some point you have to call it quits, I guess. <laughs> or I've been doing this for like three years. So here I'm just taking that same tacky glue that I showed you earlier and I am coating our skeleton's ribs, like completely coating them in that glue. And then here I got some gold trim. Now I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with the ribs or how I could make them look metallic and like ornate, but with a, a way that was obviously still flexible because I needed it to kind of follow the curves of the ribs. So I didn't want to use anything that was like truly metallic because it would have been a pain. Um, so I was really pleased with how this turned out. Um, so it was just, again, it was just a, like a gold fabric trim that I applied to all of the ribs. And I was hoping that it would give it the look of like metal or gold being adhered to the ribs. So I'm just repeating that on every rib and on the other side as well. dry completely clear. You can already see on the um, left hand side there of the screen that that glue has started to dry clear. So you don't have to worry about that. That's one of the things that I really enjoy about tacky glue is that it's very strong glue but it's also non-toxic. It's very flexible and it dries basically crystal clear in every project that I've used it in. So you can kind of, you can't really overdo it. <laughs> and I've never had anything fall off when I've used tacky glue. It works great on fabric and, you know, basically all the materials that you could think of that I've used it on. So, highly recommend. Now, this is actually a different skeleton <laughs> that I have in the house. I know, how many can you have? I have quite a few. <laughs> and I was using that as like a body double or a dummy while the, um, the ribs were drying to start making his tunic, his robe, dress, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and here's Tommy being ultra helpful as ever again. <laughs> So while those ribs were drying, I just started to make his outfit, basically. So you can tell if you watched the first part of this video where I was painting the skeleton, uh, we're kind of doing a little throwback in time um, because I was, you know, sort of hopping back and forth between two different projects to try to save time while I was waiting for coats of things to dry and, you know, whatnot. So basically here I'm using my very favorite curtains that you've seen probably in every project that I've done so far. <laughs> Um, but we're going to use them one more time for this project. So basically I just took that curtain and I folded it in half. And then I cut out, um, I, I want his ribs to be very exposed obviously since we're using all that gold detailing and trim on it. And if you look at some of the pictures of the real Gilded Saints, they almost always had their ribs exposed. So I basically cut a slit that'll sit around the back of his, uh, his neck bone, his spine. And then it's going to be like a very, very low cut <laughs> ensemble and it's going to expose the entirety of his ribcage. cage. 
So I put a few stitches in just to try to sew up the edges there. And then I was also burning the frays off with the lighter that you may have seen me doing a second ago. And now I'm shimming the, shimmying this on to get a little test fit. So as you can see, I have that like raw edge there from where I cut to expose the ribs. So I'm using some um, different gold trim that I thought that I bought for this project, and I'm going to stitch that, just hand stitch it all along the inside. Uh, now I'm not the best seamstress sewer, <laughs> but I can do enough where it'll hold up in projects like this. So I'm just going ahead and I'm attaching this the whole way around that um, very very low cut front of his robes here. And this is some other trim that I got also off of Ally Express. If you need trim and you don't need it in any hurry, I highly suggest getting it off of there because it's so much cheaper than like a Joanne Fabrics. Um, but anyway, so this was a gold and pearl trim that I got. And here I'm just sewing um, just a piece that's a few inches long to make sort of a collar for his neck, which I'll show you in a minute here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and after I stitched the trim on, I'm just gonna take some hot glue and you're, so I'm just attaching it around the ribs so it won't shift when I put him in the cabinet. And then once that's done, I'm taking more tacky glue and I'm just going over top of each rib where I put that gold trim. And I'm doing a second coat and now we're going to put my rhinestones on because why not? Of course, the shinier the better <laughs> in this project. So basically in every gap of like the, the lace on that trim, I'm adding a rhinestone. And here I felt like his hands looked a little plain. Um, usually they had a lot of rings on, but I didn't have a way to make rings. So I'm just using these little um, like faux pearl medallions and putting that on each one of his fingers. Now this was another wooden furniture applique that I got off of Ally Express, but instead of using it on furniture, I thought it would be really cool to heavily bejewel this and then put it on his sternum. So basically we're making like a chest piece for him here. And I lost count of how many rhinestones or different kinds of um, fake jewels that I put on this. But basically you can see that it's fake ruby, fake diamond, fake pearls, um, and then those medallions, those same ones that I had on his uh, fingers. Now this is a zip tie halo crown. Um, obviously, I think you've you know seen people using them for saint costumes or you know Halloween costumes. I got this one off of Ally Express, but I've also made them in the past. So basically, all of those spikes of the quote unquote halo, um, they're just zip ties and spray painted at gold. And then there's some obviously some fake flower embellishments. So I just added even more um, jewels to that. So here I'm taking some pantyhose that I got from the Dollar Tree and we're going to be putting like a shroud over top of our our saints skull here. And now if you look at some of the pictures of the Gilded Saints, you see that a lot of them did have shrouds on. It made it easier to bejewel them, I think, and it also held their lower jaws in place if they had them. So this was a pretty tight squeeze, <laughs> so I had to kind of like work to shimmy it on here. But then it gives it a very like sort of natural soft effect once you have it on and I ended up doing two different layers of the pantyhose so this is kind of it just kind of makes him look more realistic and softens everything softens all the edges of like that kind of cheap plastic mold that he has as a skeleton so here I'm just pulling all of the excess that I got from the pantyhose and I'm twisting it and knotting it at the nape of his neck there and then I'm going to cut off the excess and like I said we're going to be putting that um, this collar that I made on here so it'll conceal that that pantyhose knot in the back. So I just added some hot glue. I'm pressing that in place. And I'm just hot gluing the back as well to hold everything together. Now this was um, some more like this was fabric like dress appliques that I got off of Ally Express. And if you look at a lot of the Gilded Saints, they had these metallic pieces that sort of connected their upper skull and their jaw together. So I kind of wanted to, to mimic that. I think it's a really interesting look. And this was such a nice way to do it because it was so flexible. So basically I just took the appliques, coated the whole inside with that tacky glue, 
pressed it on top of the skull and then if there were any edges that were still sticking up after it dried you can add a little bit more glue a little bit of hot glue even um so this is what it looked like once it sort of dried and adhered to the skull and that pantyhose shroud that we made Also added some trim around the ankles there and then I put these gigantic pearls basically in all the joints um, like around the knees the elbows anywhere that there were like big screws holding our skeleton together that were hard to conceal I also added some larger diamonds in like you can see around his spine there where there were some screws that just were more difficult to cover so then once he dried I put him inside the cabinet and here's the reveal Here he is. So uh, I wanted to do the outro standing next to him to give you an idea of the size and scale of him. Um, just for reference, I'm five foot six. The skeleton is five feet tall, and the cabinet um, that he's in was six feet tall before I put that furniture applique up top. So he's sizable. <laughs> he was a big project and a big undertaking. So thank you so much for your patience while I finished him up. And um, I'm absolutely thrilled with how he turned out. To be completely honest, he's probably my favorite thing I've made to date, so I hope you think he was worth all the effort, too. Um, if you could, drop a comment down below, let me know if you liked him, and um, I have a lot of other project ideas, too many really, <laughs> so I'll probably ask for your help um, for what we're going to do for the next couple videos, so if you could give me your opinions whenever I post that question. But otherwise, I will see you in the next video, and I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you had a wonderful spooky season and a happy, happy Halloween, and I'll see you soon.